Hey, what's up guys? Scott here from Mobile Install Guide. And in this video, I'm gonna be teaching you how to use a digital multimeter to test for DC voltage. Now I know at first glance, this might look a little confusing with the dial, all these weird symbols around it, and all these ports here at the bottom for connecting your meter probes to. But by the time we're done with this tutorial, your multimeter is gonna be one of your favorite tools in your toolbox. But before we get to setting up the meter, let's go over some basic fundamentals on how you connect your meter to a circuit so that you can apply what you learn here today to any situation. When you're testing for DC voltage, you're measuring the difference in potential or the voltage across a particular portion of the circuit. So you never actually break the circuit to test for voltage. Instead, you're gonna connect to the circuit in parallel. Let me show you what I mean. So I've got two loads drawn here. They look like resistors. They each have a negative side and a positive side. Now, in order to connect these two loads together in parallel, all I have to do is connect the two positive sides together like that and the two negative sides together like that. That's a parallel circuit. So if I wanted to test the voltage across this load with my digital multimeter, I would connect to it in parallel just like I did with these two loads. So to do that, I would take the positive test lead of the multimeter and connect it to the positive side of the circuit. And I would do the same thing and take the negative test lead of the multimeter and connect it to the negative side of the circuit. Pretty easy. But let's take a look at an example of something that you might actually find in your car. So if you can't tell by this awesome picture that I've drawn, what you see here is a battery connected to an amplifier. And they're connected in parallel, just like in the last circuit, positive to positive, negative to negative. Now, if I wanted to test the voltage across the amplifier, I would connect the multimeter in the same way as I did on the last circuit in parallel with the amplifier with the positive test lead going to the positive terminal of the amplifier and the negative test lead to the negative terminal of the amplifier. And I can do the same thing if I want to test the voltage of the battery. I would connect it in parallel with the battery. Positive test lead of the multimeter to the positive terminal of the battery. Negative test lead of the multimeter to the negative terminal of the battery. Now let's take a closer look at the meter and go over how to set it up, and then we'll put it to the test in the car. All right guys, so this is the digital multimeter, and this particular one is an auto ranging meter, which basically means that it'll automatically adjust itself for the voltage range that I'm measuring. Now if I wanna set it up to measure voltage, I'm looking for this setting right here. There's a V, a line under it, and then a wave under that. The V, stands for voltage. The straight line means that it measures DC voltage and the wave means that it measures AC voltage. So thanks to the auto ranging feature of this multimeter, whether I'm measuring a 12 volt DC system or a 480 volt AC system, all I have to do is turn the dial to this setting and I'm good to go. To set up our test leads to measure voltage, you're gonna connect the black probe to this common terminal and the red one, you're looking for the terminal marked with a V for voltage and connect it there. Now, one thing to note is the maximum range of the meter. And in this case, it's 750 volts AC or 1000 volts DC. And you don't want to exceed that. So now let's take a look at a simple example with a battery and see how the meter works. All right, now I've got the meter hooked up to a nine volt battery. I've got my black probe going to the common port got the red probe going to the voltage port. So let's hook up the circuit and see what it does. So first I'm gonna turn the dial to the voltage setting, turn the meter on, and then I'll connect the circuit. There we go, 9.66 volts, easy peasy. Now instead of having a auto ranging meter like this one, you might have what's called a manual ranging meter so let's take a look at that and see what you might need to do different. This is an example of a manual ranging meter. And you'll probably already notice that it's got a lot more going on around the dial than the auto ranging meter did. For instance, it's got two separate segments here for measuring either DC voltage or AC voltage. And within each one of those segments, it's got a bunch of numbers. This is where the manual ranging comes into play because these numbers represent the range of the voltage that you're measuring. So with a manual ranging meter, you have to have a basic idea of the voltage level that you're measuring 
and you wanna set the dial accordingly. So for instance, if you wanted to measure a circuit on your vehicle's 12 volt electrical system, you would wanna set the meter to the 20 volt range. Now, if you don't really have a good idea of the voltage level that you're measuring, it's always a good idea to start at the highest range and work your way down until you see the precision that you want. Let's hook this up to the nine volt battery and I'll show you what I mean. All right, so we've got the battery set up again. And since we know it's a nine volt battery, we could just set our meter to the 20 volt range, but let's pretend that we don't know what the voltage is so that I can show you what it looks like when you step the range down on the meter. So let's turn the meter on, hook up the circuit, and we'll see that it says nine volts, but there's no decimal point, so we don't really have a whole lot of precision with this reading. So let's turn the dial to the 200 volt range and see what it does. Now you can see that it's 9.4 volts. So we've got a little bit better precision than the 1000 volt range, but we can do a little bit better than that. So we'll turn it to the 20 volt range and we see that it's 9.51 volts. So this gives us the most accurate reading that we can get with this meter. And you don't really wanna go any farther into the two volt or the 200 millivolt range because those are below the range of the voltage that we're measuring. So now that we know how to set up our meter, let's head over to the car and see it in action. All right, so we're in the garage now. I've got the Subi behind me. Let's poke around with the meter and take a look at some scenarios where you might want to use it to test for DC voltage. Let's say I want to see what my battery voltage is sitting at. With the engine off, touch the red test probe to the positive battery terminal and the black test probe to the negative battery terminal. A healthy battery should be at about 12.6 volts but based on the age of the battery and the corrosion that I found when I got in here, I'm expecting to see a little bit less. It's actually not too bad, 12.55. If you wanna see what your alternator is outputting, leave the test leads where they are and start the engine. At idle, I'd expect to see somewhere around 13.6 and 14 volts. Looking pretty good. Maybe you want to test an accessory power circuit. With the black lead connected to ground, I've got mine going to a chassis bolt in the door jam. And your red probe going to the circuit in question. In this case, I just found an accessory power fuse. With the key in the off position, your meter will read zero volts. And with the key in the on position, it'll jump up to around 12 volts. If you want to verify that you have 12 volts at the power input terminals of your amplifier, touch the black lead to the negative terminal and the red lead to the positive terminal. Boom, 12 volts. Well, that concludes this tutorial on how to use a digital multimeter to test for DC voltage. I want to thank you all for watching this video. And if you learned something today, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And if you haven't already, consider subscribing to the channel to catch all of my videos. This is the first in the series of videos I'm creating for a blog post on my website on how to use a digital multimeter. If you want some more in-depth information on the topic, head over to mobileinstallguide.com and check out the post. Links to the homepage and the blog posts are in the description below.